them all so she can get me square on where we would move. Yes, we'll go to the, uh, the, the background materials. Yeah, it, I, it, if I could interrupt before we go into that, yes. just, just everyone remember there is pending litigation on this subject. So anything that's said, you may hear again at a yes. hearing. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't have any opinions. I'm just, just reviewing facts okay. and, and public documents. Um, but there has been some, some confusion, uh, quote unquote, uh, uh, surrounding the current city council election. And actually, confusion is the word which <laughs> appears in the uh, canvassing board decision. So that's that's not my term. So for a quick review of the facts, uh, city elections are nonpartisan. The city elections are held on the date of the general election. This year, that date is Tuesday, November 6th. Three seats are open. I am running for re-election. Councilman Young is running for re-election. Councilman Sykes is not running for re-election. We thank, we thank him for his service. Two additional candidates qualified to run and appear on the ballot. That's Mr. Brackett and Mr. McCabe. And this information is available on the city website, covb.org, under election. It's all there. The ballots are prepared by the supervisor of elections. That's uh, Ms. Leslie Swan, based upon information provided to her by the city. Those ballots show the four candidates just mentioned. The election is well underway. The overseas ballots were sent, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, um, and thousands, uh, I did, by the way, invite uh, Leslie Swan today, but because she um, is a defendant in one of the in the lawsuit she uh, declined the invitation at any rate uh, so the overseas ballots were sent uh, some time ago thousands of vote by mail ballots are being sent out today uh, October 2nd and actually I'll just t take this opportunity to commend Leslie Swan and her staff they they do a very good job of handling all the technical aspects and Involved. And as I said, I did invite her to speak with us today, mainly about voter turnout, uh, but she declined for the reason that I stated. Uh, because she is named in a lawsuit uh, filed by Ms. Hillman, who was uh, disqualified as a candidate in the 2018 election. Uh, Mr. Hetty also is disqualified as a candidate. Both were disqualified because their filing papers were incomplete at the end of the qualifying period. This was the legal opinion of the city attorney's office. And I'll read some of that for the record. And this is uh, Office of the City Attorney Memorandum dated September 11th. And um, I shan't read the whole thing, it's, it's lengthy. But taking some sentences from it, all documents must contain the signature of the candidate. And then dropping down toward the uh, latter part of the statement, uh, failure to sign all the required documents by the close of the qualifying period would cause the qualifying papers to be incomplete by the end of the qualifying period. The code does not provide a grace period after the close of the qualifying period to remedy any incomplete or defective qualifying papers. Therefore, Linda Hillman and Brian Hetty did not qualify for the election. <coughs> Attached for your convenience is chapter 30, that's three zero, from the code of the city of Vero Beach, Florida. And this is dated uh, September 11th of this year and was prepared by uh, Ms. Kira Hans, uh, assistant city attorney. Ms. Hillman uh, filed a lawsuit regarding her disqualification as a candidate against the city's canvassing board. Uh, there are three members, the city attorney, city manager, and city clerk, and the lawsuit also names uh, Leslie Swan in her capacity as supervisor of elections. It was filed on September 17th, and the city was served on September 18th, and it is available on the city website, covb.org, with the background materials for this matter uh, under today's agenda. The canvassing board, with 24-hour notice, held a meeting on September 20th. It was held in the training room here at City Hall 
Um, from what I know, approximately a dozen people were in attendance. Um, I was not among them. I'm the city's representative <laughs> at the uh, Florida Municipal Power Agency, and they had a meeting that day. However, the minutes uh, and the audio of that meeting are available on the city website. Uh, that, again, that's covb.org with the background materials for this matter under today's agenda. So from the minutes, and again, this is the minute, these are the minutes of the uh, canvassing board meeting, which occurred on Thursday, September 20th. I'm just reading from them. And, uh, and this is actually the very start of it. Mr. Comment explained this is an unusual circumstance for them, and they don't typically meet except for after elections. That's after elections. He explained this board has very limited authority and powers, and their duties are to canvass the election results and to confer with the city clerk about the qualifications or disqualifications of the candidates, which is why they are here today. And that's from page one. From page two, <coughs> and this is, let me see who's speaking here. This is uh, Ms. Hans, who's the uh, assistant attorney. Um, she made the opinion that the two candidates were not qualified for this election. Um, he, meaning Mr. Comment, reiterated that this board has very limited authority and powers. This board, and I'm dropping down in this paragraph, this is on page two, uh, I'm just reading it. This board doesn't have the authority to order the supervisor of elections to put names back on the ballot, delay the election, or to void the current slate of candidates and have a special election. He said this board just doesn't have that authority. From page four, Ms. Hans added that Part of section 30-3, uh, and in parentheses A, states, quote, it shall be the responsibility of the person seeking to qualify to ensure that the city clerk timely receives all items as required by subsection B of this section by the close of the qualifying period. If all required completed documents are not received by the city clerk by the close of the qualifying period, the person shall not be qualified as a candidate. She said it is the ultimate responsibility of the candidate to make sure that all forms are complete and signed. And again, that's from page four. Uh, just reading from page five, and this is toward the bottom of the page. They can only look at the documents, uh, they can only look at the documents, which the only things he has seen weren't signed and apply the law, and the law says it's the candidate's responsibility, and if it's not complete at the end of qualifying, they are not qualified to be a candidate. And finally, from page nine, and I'm, again, I'm just reading. Mr. Command said the case law is very clear and it is ultimately the candidate's responsibility and ultimately if it is not done by the end of qualifying and everything is not complete and filed, they are disqualified. He said that, he said that is the case law over and over again. So those were statements that were made during the uh, canvassing board meeting on Thursday, September 20th. <laughs> And there was no, uh, it was held in the training room, so unfortunately there was no video only and an audio recording, uh, which again, it's available on the website. In the interest of time, um, I'm not gonna play it right now, it, it goes, it lasts, um, I think a little, a little under an hour. Um, at any rate, I obtained an opinion letter from attorney Ronald Meyer of Meyer Burks, Demma, and Baum in Tallahassee with regard to Ms. Hillman's lawsuit. The council and charter officers have copies. Um, I shall read directly from it. So this is... This is dated uh, September 27th, and it is written by... Uh, Mr. Ronald G. Meyer of that firm. And I'm reading from the first page, and this is the uh, s second paragraph. For the reasons set forth below, we believe that one, number one, Hillman and Hetty were properly disqualified as candidates. 
Number two, the action of the canvassing board in overturning that decision is improper. And three, the lawsuit seeking to compel the, the inclusion of Hillman as a candidate is without merit. We urge the City Council to reject the effort to alter the ongoing election and allow it to continue. In the event that the city moves forward, any elector, that's any voter, <coughs> may bring an action in Indian River Circuit Court to challenge the qualifications um, of candidates as, ca uh, excuse me, challenge the qualifications as candidates of Hillman and Hetty. We believe such a challenge would be meritorious. It is well established law that in order to qualify for elective office, a person seeking to be a candidate must during the qualifying period, and it's Latin after that, um, so I'm not gonna read that, submit the properly completed documents that are required of a candidate. And now we're going to page two. Um, the failure timely to file such documents renders the effort to qualify fatal. The city clerk was correct in her initial determination that Hillman and Hetty did not properly qualify as candidates. Hillman's lawsuit refers to section 99.061, in parentheses seven, in parentheses B, Florida statutes, as imposing a duty on a filing officer to make reasonable effort to notify a candidate of deficiencies in their qualifying documents. However, omitted from the lawsuit is the fact that the statute has no applicability to municipal elections. Municipal elections are governed by the city charter and ordinances, which in Vero Beach do not contain such a requirement. And then he goes on to cite a case law, uh, Sancho versus Jonas, and uh, I'll read one sentence from it. The reviewing court in upholding the candidate's disqualification held that the filing officer did not have a legal duty to provide notice of the deficiencies. And the final paragraph on this page, this is page two of the letter. Were an elector, and again that's a voter, to bring suit, it can easily be established that the mandatory preconditions for becoming a qualified candidate expressed in the city code have not been met. It can also be established as a matter of law that the failure cannot be corrected by filings after the close of the qualifying period. And he gives more case law. And in closing, and this is on page three, uh, we submit the foregoing examples of cases upon short notice to show that the city is not free to ignore the requirements of section 30-3, in parens B, in parens seven, of the code of the city of Vero Beach and excuse the filing of documents which constitute a quote, basic qualifying requirement. So again, that is all uh, from the letter. Um, I, by the way, had expressed my concerns about voter turnout if the election did not occur on election day. And this was published by the Press Journal. And I will read it for you now, I think. This was uh, an, an article entitled, Will Vero Beach Cancel Its November Election? Question mark, written by Colleen Wixon on September 23rd of this year. And, I'm, and now I'm reading directly from the article. But Moss said she had concerns about how the special election would confuse voters. And this is if we were to have a special election. Quotes, I have an issue with anything that undercuts voter turnout, she said. We could reach a historical low in voter turnout in doing this. Swan, meaning Leslie Swan, supervisor of elections, Swan agreed, and I'm, again, I'm reading from the article, Swan agreed voter turnout likely would be low during this special election. Quote, I think people are going to be confused, Swan said. The article continues, I'm still, I'm still just reading the article, this situation has never happened before in Vero Beach, city officials say. 
So I would like to, if the city clerk could please put up there. I, I took, and these, by the way, these there are two slides, and they're both from uh, Leslie Swan's website, which is voteindianriver.com. If you could show the other one first. That's it's a general pattern, and then we'll look at the city of Vero Beach, um, just so that people understand what the general pattern is. This is, by the way, and she, you can see, uh, to me, it's, it's interesting, because she tracks voter turnout. But the pattern basically is, if it's a presidential year, um, which this is not, but a presidential year, about three quarters of people turn out, just you know, over. Laura, over time. can I just make uh, just ask you a quick question? Yeah. I understand your concern about voter turnout, but that's really irrelevant to whether or not we're going to do this or not, because it, it's really based on whether or not this was appropriately done or not. Yeah. In our opinion, so I, I agree. I, I think everyone knows that voter turnout is going to be really low if you have a special election. Well, they, but I, that's, that's not a reason to not have one. a special election. It, it should be based on whether or not it was appropriately handled. No, I'm just explaining my concern, that's all. But at any rate, uh, the midterm, which this is, is about 50%. And then you could show the next slide. Thank you. Which is, which is Vero Beach. And again, this is from uh, the Supervisor of Election website. And you can see... Um, well, in 2015 and 2017, where you have only a city council race, um, the turnout is very, very low. And this, by the way, is on the city website. All of this is on the city website, so anybody can look at this. And of course, it's from uh, Leslie Swan's website, which is voteindianriver.com. Um, so anyway, at any rate, given... So the fact remains, um, and I do, I, you know, I recognize uh, Ms. Helman for her effort, but the fact remains that according to the city charter, um, she's not a qualified candidate, nor is, is Mr. Hetty. Um, so g given that fact, uh, I shall be making a motion to the effect that the election occur on election day with the four candidates on the ballot to continue unchanged. But first, of course, we should have council discussion and public comment. Well, only a comment on what the motion would be. I mean, it, it, there. I don't think that. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out in a minute. But um, I th you may. Because you don't have to do any motion. Right. Or, it, it, this, this has to. Do, this has to do with the the ordinance. So I think we should read the title of the ordinance. Normally, this would just be a notice item, and it would go on to public hearing uh, at your next council meeting. Uh, but if the council wants to discuss it, discuss it, uh, they certainly can, mm -hmm. and uh, may or may not take action tonight on it. Uh, can't adopt it tonight, but you could take other action. I personally would like to say as little as possible because of the potential that this I, could go I, for a lawsuit. But I'm not inclined to um, move forward with this and. <clears throat> That's about all I'll say. Um, well, maybe the best thing is just to uh, read the title of the ordinance, and then we can <clears> say, um, and I'll ask for your legal opinion now, uh, Mr. <clears throat> Clement. So we should just say if we want to go forward with it or not. Is, it, is that sufficient? The, the council could decide not to take it to public hearing, yes. Okay, so we'll, we, we can leave it at, at that level, at a very simple yeah. level. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. An ordinance of the City of Vero Beach, Florida, canceling the regular election for City Council members to be held on November 6, 2018, and directing the Supervisor of Elections of Indian River County to not report or publish the results of any votes that may be cast for City Council members at the November 6, 2018 regular election, calling for a special election to be held on December 18, 2018 for the election of City Council members, establishing a qualifying period for candidates for this of the special election and providing procedures for candidates filing qualifying papers for the November 6, 2018 election to notify the city of their intent to remain on the ballot providing for an effective date. Mm -hmm. Basically what this ordinance would do um, unless the council takes different action, it would come up for public hearing uh, on October 16th, if adopted at that time. It would, of course, do as its title said, it would cancel the municipal election for that for the uh, November 6th election, and it would call for a special election on December 18th. Um, just let me add that the canvassing board, after hearing um, everything that was discussed at that meeting, was it, for 
first of all, that meeting was required because that was the earliest we could have the canvassing board meeting to either affirm or uh, reverse the uh, decision that the city clerk had done uh, under some very strict time pressures and with uh, legal counsel uh, that the candidates involved were not uh, qualified and therefore their names to, to meet the deadlines on the ballot, she advised uh, Leslie Swan that the name should be removed. <clears throat> Even at that point, we couldn't have had a canvassing board meeting soon enough to still meet the deadlines. And uh, the situation was such that I was leaving town and we could, even though the city manager and the city clerk could have had a quorum and met, uh, I think the pr preference was to have all three of us there. Um, basically, after hearing what was heard, there is some case law that supports the fact that Okay. Um, shouldn't you also not be, um, you know, making the I, I the argument for the other side if we're not going to proceed with this as our yeah I, I can certainly the, okay. the case law speaks for itself. But, okay. Uh, um, I, I I I would just say that it probably is not a good idea to justify the decision that the canvassing board made if the city council is going to do something differently. So I would sure. prefer that you didn't do that. Yeah, I, I don't. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. Council okay. discussion. So as of right now, it is, uh, an, unless the council takes some other action, uh, this would be scheduled for public hearing October 16th. Thank you. <coughs> Cal, have we uh, finished? Are you folks done with your comments at this, at this time? So we unless you for public say comments? something I don't like. Are you, are you going to comment more? No. No. Okay. No, okay. no I'm not. I'll just open it for public comment. Brian Hetty, the guy that's not on the ballot, and I'm still a resident, <coughs> only I'm a more tired resident than I was earlier. <coughs> the uh, former mayor, now council member, <coughs> Laura Morris, has decided to put up a couple of uh, slides for the public to see, but... Mm -hmm. Here's one the public ought to see. It's dated September 7th. It was the last day of qualifying. And on the last day of qualifying, Tammy stood there. I stood there. City attorney's office was represented. And there was a document signed by the supervisor of elections for the city, which is also the city clerk, and it's signed by the assistant city attorney. And in their letter, the qualified candidates were Linda Hellman <laughs> and Brian Hetty. <coughs> Somebody wasn't happy with the people that qualified, and I got a I talked to the uh, city clerk and there was apparently a lot of interest in the files, in the city files that make up the election files for each candidate. And there were lots of people in and out of those and that's basically an unsupervised event. And at some point, on September 11th, apparently, someone informed the city attorney, the same one, by the way, that signed on that Hetty and Hillman were qualified, someone informed the assistant city attorney that the file was missing some papers. Well, I can tell you that's not Linda Hillman's fault, and that's not my fault. We have no control, or do we have any authority over those files? So what is it that we know? We know that on September 11th, the city clerk's office and the city attorney's office said there were six qualified people, and those people were issued a ballot position. 
we know that there were lots of people in and out of the files and we know that mysteriously on September 11th some buildings came down and uh, some elections came down because the assistant city attorney says, oh, nope, they're no longer qualified. Now, Mr. Zudans, who doesn't want to talk about this, is interesting because he didn't mind talking a little while ago whether it was permissible to change parking regulations and was told by the city attorney, no, <laughs> once they're approved, which we were, on September 7th, once they're approved, there's nothing you can do about it. But on September 11th, another letter, yes, basically looks the same, except it's missing two of the candidates. Another letter addressed to Leslie Swan, removed Hetty and removed Hillman. Two outspoken people in the community removed them and said they were no longer qualified. If you go back and you look at the paper that is reportedly missing a signature, it's not about election qualifications, it's not about the Florida statute on qualifying. The missing paper is a city code paper to verify that the candidates have been a resident for a period of one year. I don't think there's any question in anybody's mind that Linda Hillman has been a resident for more than a year. And there's probably a fair number of people in this community that wish I wasn't a resident at all and certainly not a resident for as many years as I've been at this public podium. But it's pretty well established that I am a resident and the paper in the file has my name. I took a pen and wrote my name one, two, three times. Mr. Hedges, uh, I'm going to give you another minute. I wrote my name three times. You know, by definition, when you take your a pen and you put your name on a piece of paper, that's your signature. I did that three times on this piece of paper. Oh, you didn't sign it in the right spot. Okay, so on the morning of September 11th, city clerk, Brian, can you come in and sign this on the other line? And she put an arrow where she wanted my signature. And I came in and so now there's four spots on this form that I took a pen and put my name verifying that I was a city resident for more than one year. This is nothing short of election tampering. This is disgusting. And what you people up there do about it will say a whole lot more about you than it will about this election. Thank it's you, really Mr. unfortunate. It's incredible Thank you, Mr. that we've gotten to a point in Mr. this society, Hedy, in this up. town, in this country, Mr. Hedy. where elections are tampered with Mr. Hedy. on every level, whether it's Your time a is up, local level here Mr. or whether Hedy. it's on a national level. We don't Mr. have to Hedy. look to Russia you are out for of order, a, sir. Uh, out of order? You're oh my order. goodness. You know what's out of order? Tampering with the order. election. That's what's out of order. And your time is up. You want to know what's out of order? Mr. Taking Hattie, people's sit down. name off of the ballot. That's what's out of order. This is Officer, disgusting. Help him have a seat, please. Remove him from the building if that's necessary. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mrs. Hillman. Hi. Linda Hillman, 2315 18th Avenue, and has been since 1994. I've been coming before councils well before a lot of you have been on um, city council, some longer than have resided here. I'm going to read from your city website. 
Planning and Zoning Board. All members of the Planning and Zoning Board appointed by the City Council shall be residents of the city. I was on P&Z for three and a half years. Again, from your website, code enforcement. Board members shall be residents of the city who possess outstanding reputations for civic pride, interest, integrity, responsibility, and business, or professional ability, and demonstrate experience, interest, and knowledge in the code enforcement manners. I've been on code enforcement for over a year now. Am I a resident of this city? I have been. That piece of paper that went missing from my file never was put back until it was put back blank is a residency um, filing paper. Five years ago was put into effect because a council member was elected and was not a city resident. His name is Charlie Wilson. He made the mistake of parking his car at an apartment in my neighborhood claiming he was a resident of Vero Beach. He was not. I signed those papers. On August 21st, a council member stated that he took copies of my file, he printed them, and he did snap from his phone of my file. Said it publicly at the August 21st meeting. <coughs> That's public record. If in fact that council person did that, and I can give you the exact time, Mr. Zudans, 531.40 on the clock is when you stated you printed my files, you downloaded my files, Address and you took screenshots of my files. Council, please. August 21st. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. 531.40, look at the clock. I requested at the canvassing board meeting 12 days ago all communications, files, phones, computers, emails of Mr. Ryan Bass to any and all council members as chair of the finance commission as he is the one who filed the complaint on September 11th that I was not qualified. I want all information and it's a second request please of that man to every and all council members anything that has to do with my filing from July 9th to the present. I'm asking for a public request the second time and I want them all. I'm qualified and some people don't want me to be for 62 days I ran a clean campaign, as I said that to Mayor Howell at the FPNL meet and greet. I will run a clean campaign. I will not discourage anyone from any council member. I never said a bad word while I was canvassing, and I never intended to. Two treasurer reports were accepted. They're all on record. I'm a qualified candidate and I should be put back on the ballot. There is no reason why I should not be out canvassing people to be where I want to be. For this community to support it, to back it up in everything that is trying to be sold away from us. I belong here. I filed those papers. My filing fee was accepted. I was sworn in. And then again on the 7th, at 10 minutes to 5, I was told everything was fine. Everything is fine, just go in there and wait and we'll put the names in the basket and we'll draw your position. How could you put someone's name in the basket if you didn't verify the information prior to that? Obviously that job wasn't done either. So here I am fighting to get back on the ballot. Thank you. My name was mentioned, and I believe that Right. Well, mine was too. But I just wanted to comment that that meeting on August 21st at 543, I said that I looked online at the filed reports 
Okay, we'll, we'll, I'll have to go back and look at it. I will, I will. Um, but I looked at the online reports that Ala Kramer was your campaign treasurer. I didn't know anything about the this uh, issue of something being missed. Mr. Bass, but, let, let, let and, that, and that indicates to me that the ethics of the city council to find out something and not report it to the clerk. I didn't say that. I said I saw Ala Kramer because someone had told me that Ala Kramer was your treasurer. So I went on the website and looked to and see And that's who, not what you said either. You accused me of having Ken Daig as I, my I treasurer. I got it mixed up. I corrected myself. Well, yeah, well, you didn't get Get very mixed up when you said you downloaded my file, you printed my file, and you took a photo snapshot of it on your phone. Okay. Five thirty-one forty. Okay, but I had never t physically touched your file in the office, which is what you were insinuating I had somehow done. I said that I t looked at her file in the office. I don't think so. I'll, I'll be incredibly brief. Ryan Bass, it was just said that I filed a complaint. Uh, I would like for Wayne Comment uh, and Tammy Bursick to respond to that. I absolutely, 100%, 1 billion percent, never. That came from Ms. Bursick. That is factually incorrect, and I want it cleared up now. Ms. I want it cleared up now. I want all records. I did not file any complaint. That is factually incorrect. Um, no. That is factually this, incorrect. This was, was there a complaint filed? From Mr. No, this came from my attention okay. from Mr. Ryan about the um, signatures not being signed. But there was nothing in writing. He had just called me and asked me to look at the files because I guess you had come in to look at the files. I did not call you. I had a message to call you and I called you about Because this. I... There you go. We've got so many. Wait, whoa, whoa. This is not a lie. I did not file any complaint, and I will be crystal clear about that. I have nothing in writing. Thank you. Okay. Wow. It's like I've been waiting like eight hours for this. Megan just wants. To sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Please. It's really suspicious that if there was not. According to Tammy, there were never any written complaints. They were all phone calls. One in the morning from Mr. Sykes, who she tried reaching. Um, Mr. Zudan spoke to the city manager in the morning prior to that, and Tammy received a call from Mr. Bass. That's not true. Now, <laughs> a few days later, Mr. Bass resigns from the Finance Commission. Awful suspicious. Again, I myself. Again, I did not file a complaint. I walked in to the city office and asked for copies of all of the candidates. I did not even point out the fact that Linda Hillman did not sign her paperwork. That was pointed out to me in that office. In, in regards to the Finance Commission, Lang Sykes appointed me to the Finance Commission. I served and worked my butt off for two years in this community. And I I'm speaking. Five years. I served for two years working my tail off in this community. And Lang is stepping down. I was crystal clear with the staff that the reason for my not seeking to be reappointed was because <laughs> the fact that I have other business and community involvement and the fact that I wanted to give them time to reappoint a new chairman and to find somebody to serve. I was crystal clear about that. Additionally, I'm going to be out of the country this month because for three years I've been working on building an orphanage in Guatemala. So for you, for you to question my integrity is unbelievable. Well, for you Thank you. Mrs. Hillman, Mrs. Hillman, you can't just keep commenting from, we're, we're not going to do a back and forth. I would ask, That's not why we're here. I would ask you to remember that there are people behind the things that you throw out there. You have not called me once. You have not spoken with me once. You have not asked me once. Mr. Bass. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Mm -hmm. um, uh, Megan Hoots, um, I'm a Vero Beach resident. Um, so, okay, first question, is it, does a request have to be written or is a voicemail also a request? Because if, do you keep records of your voicemails at the city, Tammy? Do you have a voicemail? And does that, or does it have to be a written trail to be a request? Or, I, I'm uh, sorry, I'm the, sure the, the, There's a, the differentiation between is this um, complaint, does it have to be written or is a voicemail? It can be, okay, all right. Because there was just implied that nothing was written and that that would be the line of demarcation. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were asking a public records request. It does not have a, a public records request does not have to be written. No, I'm, I'm referring to Mr. Bass. Does that I have nothing written from Mr. Bass? And would complaint. it have to be, or does verbal does that qualify as a complaint? A request. I, no. I'm not I sure. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know if you classify it as a complaint. It could be just information that was given, not necessarily a complaint. I, I'm just complaint. Oh, I was just, I'm just clarifying because it was talked about like as if a written email thread would be required in order for this to hold water. I'm just asking. Um, so let, let's assume that. Um, so you said the failure to submit all the documents by the deadline, right? You're implying. That that Hillman and Hetty 100% did not right, and and unfortunately, we don't actually know that to be true. We um, are assuming that that is true. So you know, if this situation was a lot more simple, it would be Friday rolls around and Tammy says, "Hey." You guys are missing this paperwork, can you come in? And they fail to, and then they're not sworn in. And you look at them and you say, I'm sorry, I can't swear you in because you're missing this paperwork and you knew you were missing this paperwork and I told you you were missing this paperwork and I can't swear you in. Th then we wouldn't be here, right, if that happened. However, that is not what happened, right? At, at some point along the way, it was assumed that all of the qualifications had been met and they were sworn in. Not only was it assumed that the qualifications were met and they were sworn in, these people are saying that they did provide that paperwork, which I think earns some merit, right? Because these are stakeholders in our community and I, I believe that they have integrity. So the situation's a little bit more complicated than just saying that they did not meet the burden of providing this paperwork and that they, you know, were not qualified because of some failure on their part. It's unfortunately not that cut and dry, this situation. So we have to step back and consider all possible um, outcomes and scenarios. Maybe the city clerk failed to do their job. Maybe something else happened. But you, at this point, at this moment, we can't say for certain what happened. And that's where the problem is. And if you can't say for certain what happened, then I, I believe you owe these two people the opportunity to run for city council. And again, unfortunately, it was not as simple as a red flag going up, them being notified that they were missing paperwork, and then they <coughs> failed to meet it. At, right now, you are being told by these two people that they submitted this paperwork. And at one point, Tammy believed that, to, that paperwork to be submitted as well because she wouldn't have sworn them in. So there's, there's a very big gap of information missing here. And to sweep this under the rug feels very problematic. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of unanswered questions and a lot of factors that we have to really consider. And I think it would just be absolute travesty to the city of Bureau Beach if we didn't address this and take it seriously. And I... I just don't think it is being taken seriously. And I, I appreciate that these two are fighting this tooth and nail. And also, 
We spent four hours talking about Dodger Town and we made no forward progress at all. And now in the middle of the night, you have a dozen people in this room and this, it was the most important thing on your agenda. And you've scared everybody off because it's nearly midnight. And what did we accomplish with the first two agenda items? No forward progress on Dodger Town and now the parking meters is going from three hours to two for season. And this is where this, the people need to be here for this part of the conversation. And they're not, because we delayed till 10 p.m. And that's also irresponsible. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hoots. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I'm still James Carr, and I'm still a resident of Vero Beach. And if we're here much longer, we're going to have to call this a residence. Um, you might want to consider heading off future problems by uh, saying that once they hand out a, a letter saying that everything's approved, that it's really approved in future and that uh, that stands and that it can't be undone after that. That once they say, okay, everything's signed and all the paper's in, that that's, that, that, <coughs> let that stand. Other than that, I guess it's all we need is uh, a few Russians and maybe an Access Hollywood bus. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Carr. Hey, I know it's very late, so I'll be very brief. Um, I, I just think I love Tammy. We all know she does a great job. I just think this has been such a sad chapter, really, to have this happen to two people. And I really think we need to tighten up the records, the record keeping. Um, when somebody is told that they're qualified, that however many people it takes to double check that should be in place. I mean, I feel bad for Tammy. She's got the whole centennial on her. She's got a lot of stuff on her. So somebody else needs to follow up. I mean, this just should not have happened. It's it's a sad chapter, I think, and I feel really bad for these two people who put their heart and soul into it. And I know you have to follow the law, but something needs to change. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Gould. Okay, any other public comment? Yes. Well, I want to add, it, it also feels problematic that there are two people here on this council that are up for re-election, and so it, are you, I hope you're able to make a sound and level-headed decision about this. Obviously, you have skin in the game. It might behoove you to, to thin out the playing field. I hope that you can still come to a reasonable conclusion regardless of the fact that you're up for re-election. And that's hard, we're all human, but I, I implore you to do the right thing and allow two more people on the ballot. And yes, it'll affect your numbers, and yes, it'll affect voter turnout, but that doesn't mean it's not the right thing. Thank you, Ms. Hoot. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Susan Carr, 1826 21st Avenue, Hero Beach. Um, and this is just a question. Um, I was wondering if one council member is hosting a fundraiser for a candidate, does that council member, is there a need for recusal? Uh, and that's I'm not sure question. how that's relative to the subject matter. We're it talking. is. Is it? Yeah, because it has to do with the election. I, I think Mr. Clement already answered that question, but not here. So, someone had inquired about that earlier today, and, oh. and it, this is a legislative matter, so that doesn't come into play. You actually have two candidates on the council that would eventually vote on this, and they're not disqualified. It's not a matter that the it. person is is sitting. This is someone who's not sitting on the council. It doesn't matter. It's legislative. <laughs> All kinds of biases and prejudice come into legislative matters. Politics plays into legislation. It's just not a consideration. Okay. 
Thank you. The, only, the only time it comes into play is if it's a financial interest that comes into play. If there's a financial conflict, then it would be considered in a legislative matter. But other than that, it, it just doesn't come into play. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carr. Okay, <clears throat> anybody who hasn't spoken? Seeing none, we're going to close public comment. Council discussion after having heard public comment. Anyone? I would just say one thing about the process when you go through, and I, I'm sure everyone can attest to this. You go in, you fill out your paperwork, you take your paperwork in, TME makes a copy of everything and gives it back to you, and then she puts it on the uh, City of Vero Beach website. And um, so the suggestions that somehow uh, someone snuck in and stole papers out of the, is ridiculous. Um, but that's my only comment. Okay. And my, my comment would be that there are a ton of factors. Um, Mrs. Hoots mentioned it. There's a ton of factors in this uh, matter. And there's a lot involved, and there are a lot of moving parts. And because it, and it's serious stuff, because this uh, can affect how things play out in the future. And so, seeing that it is, um, I really think that the best way for this to continue to play out would be through the judicial process at this point. That's Anyone else? Okay. Well, Wayne. So, well, we, we have to either. So we don't, I guess. You, I, if you we, take no action, this will be on for public hearing on um, October 16th. So then I move that we remove it from public hearing. Wally. <laughs> Do we second have, that. Do, Wayne, is it is it a item that requires a motion or is it a consensus? Would, would no, it would require a motion to to basically you're saying that it not go to public hearing. You're basically killing it at this stage. I see. Okay. Um, well, then we want to do a roll call. Sure. Yeah. Dr. Zudians? Yes. Colonel Young? No. Coun Councilwoman Moss? Yes. Vice Mayor Sykes? Yes. Mayor Howell? Yes. Passes 4 to 1. All right. Um, moving on to Council Matters. If, if you're going to go past 11 o'clock, you'll need to make a motion and to continue. We got six minutes. We can do it. We can do it. Six minutes. We can do it. <laughs> Take it. Uh, Ms. Hillman, please. Okay. So. Uh, and thank you, Laura, for the congratulations. Uh, Ms. Hillman, please. Okay, I have no matters. And I wonder if uh, the vice mayor has any. I do not. And so I wonder if Councilwoman Laura Moss um, I would just like to thank uh, Live Like Cole. Tammy, could we show that slide? <laughs> um, if Halt would, would please uh, show the slide of the Memorial Pier. Um, that's uh, the Live Like Cole Memorial Pier in Riverside Park. And I would like to thank them very much. And I appreciate the birthday wishes today. Today is also the anniversary of my father's death. He died in 2000. He died on my birthday, which I know sounds, it sounds terrible, but actually, um, we, you know, we both loved birthdays. And I, I was with him. I was with him for the whole week uh, before he died. And I learned more in that week than I'll ever learn anywhere else, even on city council. And I've learned a lot here too. But, uh, I, you know, I have to say um, that he died on a Monday. And the, the head nurse was getting ready to leave for the weekend. It was Friday. My birthday was a Monday that year. 
So she was getting ready to, to leave for the weekend, and she said to me, oh, you know, I'm sorry, so sorry to tell you this. And she didn't know that Monday was my birthday. She says, your father, he, he won't make it through the weekend. And I didn't say anything, but I'm thinking... No, he won't be here for my birthday. I was, you know, I mean, it's it, believe me, it's upsetting enough to sit um, with a person who's, you know, most, most near and dear to you for the entire week around the clock. But to be told that, but God bless him, he he died on my birthday. Um, she was surprised he still was there. But um, as as I said, it, it sounds terrible, but it was it was actually um, the way we both wanted it, and I'm just. I'm happy that it worked out that way. But this pier is really beautiful. And that's what I did this morning. I walked to this pier. Um, so I, I really want to thank the Coppola family because this pier gives everyone in the community an opportunity to remember your your loved ones, your family members, your friends. Um, and I had made a, don a donation for a plank. So my parents are on there. And, uh, and that's what I did this morning. Um, for my birthday and also for the anniversary of my father's death, I walked to this pier and I just want to personally um, thank the Coppola family for for that because it was um, it really was the perfect way to start the day. And I I'll say what what I what I said to them about this pier was that it looks like a runway that you could just go down and just soar into the arms of God. I mean that's that's how I see it. It's just beautiful. Thank you so much to the Coppola family. It was like cool. I have Thank nothing, you for nothing more to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moss. <laughs> Moving on to uh, Councilman Young. Yeah, very quickly. Um, one of the concerns that was brought up at the last council meeting was uh, a, a concern about picking up a veteran that needed um, transportation to West Palm. Um, as a result of that uh, inquiry, the Veterans Council added an additional pickup point, so um, that individual will be um, uh, able to have transportation um, as it should. Also, I wanted to say thanks to the city staff. Um, I know. Um, I had requested that in honor of the POWMI day that uh, we have the uh, POW flag flown from the Memorial Island Sanctuary, and that was done, and it made a huge impact to the community and to the veterans, and I want to say thank you for that. Also, just two points in October, 16 October and 24 October are two centennial events. Um, the 16th, Tammy, we have the quilt bring and brought to the city? Yeah, they're going to be at the next city council meeting showing off that beautiful centennial quilt. Okay. And then on the 24th, the banner uh, will be uh, displayed downtown uh, on uh, Main Street. So if y'all have the opportunity, please uh, join us at that occasion. That's all I have. Thanks. And Councilman Zudans. Yeah, uh, it reminded me that you you can still, they're actually now that they finished this, they're working on uh, fixing the pier, same group as Live Like Coles, fixing the pier at the end of um, Royal Palm Point, and you can buy, you can still buy planks for that pier that's going in. There may be some still on this one as well, but you can go either place and you can get involved with that as well. And finally, that's getting fixed okay. after, Excellent. it's been a while. Great. Good. Good. Yep. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay. Well, then um, thank you all for sticking through to a long day, and this meeting is adjourned.